Understanding the secrets of reverse swing. Like many fundamental things in our everyday life, reverse swing in cricket was discovered by accident. While its eventual discovery was inevitable, it is the manner and nature of the find that is compelling. Back in the day, with no speed guns at their disposals, bowlers would try to quantify their bowling speeds by observing the change in the ball's behavior in different situations. Therefore, by bowling at a certain speed under certain conditions and treating the ball in a certain way, reverse swing was incorporated into the pace bowling arsenal. Reverse swing is so much more than seeing a player smoothing one side of a cricket ball using their sweat or saliva. The full mechanics of the phenomenon are less known and understood by fans and players alike. A rudimentary understanding of fluid mechanics is required to grasp the working of even simple swing bowling. Conventional swing is generally extracted from balls bowled between 30 miles per hour and 70 miles per hour. In scientific terms, Swing is a net sideways force on the ball which requires a pressure difference on either side of the ball. This is caused by the position of the separation points. A turbulent boundary layer is able to counteract the pressure difference better than a normal boundary layer because of its increased kinetic energy and thus separates later too. The later the boundary separation, the higher the fluid velocity when the boundary layer detaches and therefore the lower the pressure. The net force caused by a pressure difference acts towards the lower pressure region. Therefore, in conventional swing, the ball laterally moves in the same direction as its seam position. For a shiny new ball, pacers angle the seam of the ball to the direction of the delivery, which trips the laminar boundary into turbulence. The other side of the ball retains its laminar boundary layer, which leads to the sideways motion. Reverse swing. At a certain delivery velocity, the laminar boundary layer naturally transitions into a turbulent one and leads to a decreased net force. When a new ball is bowled at a speed higher than 85 miles per hour, this transition point moves back and the laminar flow transitions to turbulent before encountering the seam. When the seam trips the flow, the boundary layer is thickened. The seam side boundary layer has an earlier separation point because a thick boundary layer is generally weaker than usual. This asymmetry is opposite to the one we see in conventional swing and the net force acts in the direction opposite to the seam in this case. <clears throat> Reverse swing with the old ball. Most bowlers who can't bowl 90 miles plus consistently have to wait for the ball to get older before they are able to reverse swing it. A rougher surface means the speed at which the transition from laminar to turbulent flow on the non-seam side occurs decreases and reverse swing is therefore achieved at lower speeds than in the case of a new ball. As the match progresses, fielders begin polishing one side of the ball and keep the other scuffed. The transition from laminar to turbulent then happens naturally, without any input from the seam position. As it turns out, there are many misconceptions about reverse swing ranging from the ball's color to the amount of cloud cover and even the alleged role of floodlights in assisting reverse swing. The bowlers may be even less concerned about the physics of airflow as long as they are executing the bowling plans and making the ball old or new, twirl through the air. But it's only important for the casual cricket watcher to understand the actual mechanics so as to truly appreciate the notion of reverse swing bowling.